This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. John Reese Davies was in there? I get a lot of shit for that. I told that dude to fuck off that one time. I felt really bad about it. Who, John Reese Davies? Yeah, isn't he the Hobbit guy? Yeah. No, he was the fucking dwarf, you asshole. He's whatever he is. No, he's a, he's, he's been called yeah. out for being a jerk many times. Well, well he was really okay. nice when I met him. He was being nice to They're me, and I was being an asshole. Because I was, uh, it was at the end of the convention, and I was packing all my shit. Neil had just walked away, and I was turned the other way, so I was putting shit in the box. And he goes, how did you do this weekend? Like that. Oh, his voice is not that, you know, at all. And I go, hey, man, I'm just trying to get this shit done. So, you know, if you could just go. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, man, bye. And he started doing shit. And uh, one of my friends come up to me and like, you were a dick to him? And I'm like, I don't fucking know that guy. Why is he talking to me? And oh, he my explained God. who he was. And I was like, the guy from Sliders? <laughs> from, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, oh, yeah. He's I in just, all of them. I just knew Sliders. Well, he's in the second he just knew person. Sliders, that's it. He's in sliders. Yeah, he's he in sliders. He left. They they run him out of the show because he was such a jack, uh, jerk really? to the writers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I don't know why he was even trying to talk to me. Maybe he liked one of the shirts he saw on the table or some shit. But I was a total asshole, and I felt bad about it afterwards for like a second. Maybe and he was I turning just, his life around, and you fucked it up for everybody. Well, yeah, but you see me at a convention on a Sunday. I'm not well. Nobody is. I've man. been drinking since <laughs> fucking Friday. Right. I've had to deal with assholes asking for discounts on t-shirts and shit. <laughs> If it, I don't want to fucking talk to you. Like, when I'm leaving, I'm just like, I got to get my shit and fucking go. Yeah. I got to do one thing. The heat is on. The heat is on. I kept like, what's that noise? And it, 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 you'll hear it in the recording. Is that Kenny Loggins? The heat is on. I think we're actually recording. Like, we are recording. He just, just leave. He just left. Fuck, he just leave mid-recording to go fucking play with the heat? Yeah. He's fucking, he's like, he's like everybody's dad in the fucking eighties. Like, don't touch the fucking heat. Yeah, I gotta go do it. You could just yell at my son upstairs. You could have did that shit. <laughs> I was in the middle of talking about this fucking Hobbit guy you guys love. And then yeah, that sucks because you were on a roll and it'd been a good time to cut in. Yeah, and then I, you just took I, off and whoop. fucked it up. I mean, I don't know. I think we just keep going. We just keep it. I felt pretty good about my life. I'm wearing a jacket. I wasn't hot. Yeah. <laughs> what was wrong with you? <sighs> Nothing. I was listening to you bash that that John Reese Davies. Like, that, that's why you were getting high. You are getting mad. You are fucking <laughs> like pulling that fucking collar out. Getting, getting mad heated. at me. Getting heated. Yeah, that's the word for it. He's Miami heated. There are some stories about him not being a person you want to work with really? multiple yeah. times. I always feel bad when I'm a dick to somebody on accident, though. Like those moments where you just like don't want to fucking be bothered and somebody happens to talk to you at that time and you kind of tell them to fuck off in a rude way because you say, like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the Girl Club Podcast. Yeah, what's up? Uh, I'm Steve Vessel. Death Metal Dave. I'm Derek. And today we're talking about Sequels. Sequels. Yeah. Episode two. Season two. It is fucking... I, I, we didn't plan that, actually, did Maybe we? I need an episode two with that <laughs> dude from Sliders so he can understand that I'm not a dick. Just the baby. Yeah, Gimli's okay. You, you, need, you need to read it. Read I'm it. not ever going to remember Is he still name. alive? Are we going to curse him? No. Ooh, he's next. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> he's fucked. Oh. You better have Jerry O'Connell save his ass. Well, maybe he's next now. We do. Anyway. Hold on. Okay, this whole episode's yeah. actually about Sliders? No. No, no, Oh, no. fuck. Okay. It's about sequels. Other yeah. S word. Yeah. But Lots of them. It's the Man, thing. There's so many good sequels. It's the thing you guys like to bitch about all the time. Every time one's announced, but then when one's not announced, you beg for one. That is true. Yeah, people that's very that. true. Yeah. <laughs> people, uh, people are never satisfied. I mean, yeah, people are losing their shit about like Friday Thirteenth not having a, a movie since what 2009 now 2010. And people shit on that movie though. So. They, oh yeah. Well, I mean, when they finally did the remake. What? Yeah, it was a reimagining. No, yeah, we're really flashback into the first episode. Oh, the now. very first episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. People like shit all over it, and I was like, dude, I saw Willa Ford's boobs, and I saw murder, and like, what? Yeah, that was. was, I, was didn't, I didn't hate it, and was, I, I on when I kept went back and watched yeah, it more and more, yeah. I was like, this is not bad. No, it's not. A, it's it's a slasher film. Like, why the fuck? That's the thing with these like sequels. <coughs> like a lot of sequels we're going to talk about are sequels like slashers, and. We take like we hold the original in such high regard for some reason. When you really look back on it, it's like it's all trash. It's mostly all trash. Yeah, we it's love just, trash. Though. It's just teenage kids getting murdered. Friday Thirteenth is just kids going camping, and like the, Doing remake, the same thing every episode. The reality is that remake's probably better than the original Friday Thirteenth as far as like realism. If you want to act, because that little old lady is just murdering all these people, and nobody has any idea. This old lady <laughs> not wearing a mask, wearing a grandma sweater, and an old perm. Just murdering <laughs> everybody. 
I'm going to go with the Jason Voorhees and the Potfields. <laughs> oh, that was such a great beginning, by the way. That, that's, my, that's my main problem with that one, is uh, the <laughs> opening scene, that cast is better than the cast you got to deal with the rest of the movie. From like, the characters are way more likable. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But I think, oh, yeah, sorry, Supernatural fans. No, it's fuck. I, I, I guess the more we're talking about, I was like, you know what? I need to go back and watch that movie yeah. again because I think I like it even more now that we're talking about. I was like, man, there's a lot of good shit in that movie. I like how over the top it is. I like how fast Jason moves in it sometimes because I, I like think that makes explained. way more sense. Yeah, yeah explain how he jumps around so fast. I thought the underground tunnel shit made sense because the dude just fucking lives in the woods. I don't need everything in the horror movie explained to me. I have bitched about that before, but they didn't go back in time and tell you like Jason's like lived this horrible life. Yeah, he was abused by his mama. He was abused by his mom, and then Bill Mosley beat. Him. Now Sherry Moon's his mom, or whatever the fuck you want to do to me. They didn't do that. <laughs> but anyway, that's not a sequel. That's, that's not a sequel. That's a, it's a, it's a, a reboot. We did have like the second Friday Thirteenth, which we'll skim over. I feel like that's like the introduction to Jason Voorhees and shows you what you can really do with a sequel. Because it's a completely. I mean, that started that franchise. The yeah. first one, okay, it exists. It's a good movie. I know I shit on it, but I like it. You get to see Kevin Bacon get stabbed. Spoiler: If you haven't seen it, fuck you. Sorry. If you haven't seen it, get the fuck but, out of here. But part two gives us old baghead Jason Voorhees because before that, there's no Jason Voorhees despite what pe- some people try to say. And they do his age appropriately for the time the movie came out, which I thought was cool. I thought it was really cool. I, and I, I like the idea of like it, it continues like pretty much right after the, where the first one leaves off. You know, There are some yeah. horror movies that do that and they do it well and then some that just say, fuck it, we're going to do something Well, different. Jason gets on a bus, I guess, and goes hunts down uh, what's-her-face. <laughs> it's a thing. Like, it doesn't make any you sense. You know, these guys in Mass, they really like to drive. Yeah, you know Michael Myers loves to drive. He's Jason, good at it. Jason, he won't show you that he can drive. I bet he can. He's got to drive. Yeah. How's he getting from? Point or he's lounging in a fucking taxi with that bag on his head. Like he literally shows else. up at her fucking apartment. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird scene. Apparently, I guess something happened with Adrian. Adrian King. Adrian right? King. Yeah. That she wasn't going to do the movie or some shit. So they just filmed that quick scene of her like in the house with the, the phone and then. The, was it the cat that they kill first? The, cat, oh, the cat scares her and then she opens the, cat the fridge scares and sees mom's her. head. The mom's head, that's what it is. Yeah. So how the fuck did that get there? Baggage. Yeah. Well, he, had, no, on. he was trying to keep her cool. You know, mom's fucking hot. He's been under her arm the whole time. Yeah. Or she's been under his arm So he probably, I mean, they didn't have Uber. The, so he called a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> he held a taxi. He held a taxi. Because, you know, he's got, he's got bum quarters because he lives in the woods. It's not bad, bad. He just shot. killed the guy. He just killed the guy when he got there. Yeah, oh, it was like a fucking ham. I really like that sequel though. I think it's a really well done sequel. It's an introduction to like this iconic horror character because it's not him in the first one. It's a dream, so that's not a real Jason. Sorry. No, that's the yeah. thing is you really don't know what he yeah. looks like. First Jason is part two Jason, despite what a band name might tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we love Arya Lehman. No, fuck no, him. We don't. He should have been on our death list if you're listening <laughs> to last week's podcast. Ugh. Uh, the, shoot, there's so many. Uh, I've got the whiteboard of doom way up there, and uh, there's, there's so a many. Lot. I mean, even in this, like you, you run like 20 on here, but there's hundreds of horror sequels. I mean, it's a non-stop thing. If, if a horror movie comes out and has any success, boom! Oh, it's good to see. You're getting a sequel, unless you're one of those like really artsy fucking style, like Midsummer and shit like that. Yeah. You're not gonna, maybe not. Or if the characters die, they're gonna get a prequel. Yeah, that's still like AC. If they put like. I mean, yeah, it's still a sequel. Yeah, I know. If it has a quill in it, it counts. <laughs> uh, well, okay, uh, I've got Hellbound up there. Well, that's a, yeah, I mean, that, that is a that's, fucking fantastic. That's in my sequel. top five sequels of all time. Holy it's amazing. Shit. I'll, I think I like it more than the first one. It's like the low budget Aliens or Terminator 2. It just goes so batshit crazy with the original concept. It does. It's it just takes the takes a different. People. It's a different type of movie. It's just like, do you like Hellraiser? Well, do you like Hellraiser on drugs? <laughs> He's like, oh, weed, oh, weed, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you take a character, you take characters who are in the in the first film, like ten minutes, in yep. the total, and then you make an entire movie about them. And you take a, you bring out their entire world. It's like, wow, this is a badass. They did it really good. So much weird shit with that doctor in it. Or doctor <laughs> Chenard is a fantastic yeah. fucking character. That shit just goes way the fuck over the top, and like the monsters in it, or Cenobites, whatever you want to fucking call them, they look fantastic. Yeah. But when he's at the end, he's got the fucking thing at the end of his dick. head, the big it's, old it's dick a big thing penis. on the head. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. It's the wildest shit. Holding them shit. together. Well, yeah. Doesn't it all? That might, yeah, that's up there for me. Unfortunately, Hellraiser 3 happens after it, but some but, people like it. That, that first movie, that, fucking... that, that first sequel they brought back, you know, they brought Kirsty, they brought back fucking Julia, they, they brought Frank, I mean, they did it right. Frank's a real fucking douchebag. 
Uh, like he wasn't? I thought he was okay in the first one. Oh my god! He was relatable. <laughs> he, he's relatable. Oh my, okay. I thought Frank just seemed like a misunderstood person in the first one. Oh yeah, okay. Part two. Sure. Oh, did, he, <laughs> did he turn heel there? Oh man. Nice guy Frank. Well, he's kind of a, a you kind of feel sad for him in the second one because he's in his personal hell and he's full of, he's like next to nothing but lust and he can't have it. That's the whole point of his little part of hell. Oh, that's why all the women that are coming out of the out of the uh, out of the walls and they're like in sheer blank, you know, like sheer like, blankets. Like, but then they start bleeding through. Yeah, it. so you can. Yeah, but that's cool for him because he doesn't mind the blood, right. and it's like you can see their nipples, and he, but he can't have them. And so when Julia shows up, he's like, "Oh, hey!" And then she just tro- totally does a whole reversal. I'm like, "Who's in control now, motherfucker?" So before she shows up, do you think he's just jerking off a lot? What if the hell is he? Doesn't but he have can't a dick jerk anymore? off. Yeah, I bet he does have a dick, but he can't use it. Oh, that's hell. Like, you can just jerk off forever until yeah. it's just like a fucking scab in your hand. Jesus. I mean, it's Hellraiser. Hellraiser 17. <laughs> the return of Frank's dick. Whatever. You been, you've been 14 before. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You just got to lotion it up, man. It's a yeah. Raw. It's just, a little raw. Yeah. Clyde Barker didn't write that scene, but I'm sure he thought about it. Um, I guarantee you. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Uh, he didn't. The studio was probably like, sir. <laughs> well, from what I remember, he never, really the came out, he never really came out against that sequel. That's awesome. Uh, at least I don't remember any interviews with him. I never remember him saying, oh, that was, bad. I can't believe they took this movie and, and fucked me over. Like, that, that didn't ever hurt any of those stories. To be fair, executive did he producer, ever, uh, so. Yeah. Did he ever say about any of the sequels, though? Uh, Which is kind of weird. Good point. Maybe (laughs) maybe maybe absence is the best. They sent him a check for the third one, so I guess he was like, whatever. Whatever, yeah. You can make dudes with CDs in their heads and shit. Fuck it. Buy a new CD player. Hellraiser 3. (laughs) Wait, what a way to be like, hey, this is the 90s. (laughs) <laughs> yes, CDs. Oh yeah. God! We got CD head and we got floppy disk guy. All right, all right. they should have dial up Bobby. Dial up Bobby. <laughs> dude, dude, that makes the fax machine noise. The uh, fucking head explodes. You all. <laughs> <laughs> you always hear him coming around the corner. Burp, burp, kick, burp. Good dial up's coming. Is that fucking it's AOL dial sign up. in? That's the dial up centibite. It's oh, fucking awful. God, I hate Hellraiser three. He just looks like Darth Vader with his head's different. This is dial up. Yeah. I like when I talk shit about a sequel that I know is like 50 50, like hated and loved, because you know somebody's like white knuckle angry wanting to jump in and tell me I'm a For Hellraiser idiot. 3? Oh, oh, dude, I've met a lot of fans of Hellraiser 3. Okay, yeah. cool. Because I'll talk shit about it, and then people are like, no, actually, that's pretty good. You're fucking dumb. And I'm like, I am dumb, but I still don't think it's good. I know a guy who loves Terminator 3. He thinks it's great. Uh, Not as good as Terminator 2. No. So let's go to that one. Terminator 3 or 2? Terminator 2, two, two is the best two. action film ever fucking made, and I will stand by that forever. It's got everything. It's got Arnold. It's got fucking Robert Patrick running like a fucking weirdo. Robots. It's got robots. It's got Edward Furlong before heroin. It's got a lot of good things. <laughs> it, it's got Linda Hamilton before she started making out with people at conventions. That Guns happened. Roses. That happened, yeah. It's got what? Guns and Roses. Guns and, and it's got Bobby fucking Buttnick from Salute Your Shorts. And that's really what oh, people look over too Man. much. All-star cast. It's an all-star cast. Great soundtrack. Just tons. Of, yeah, it's just a good like follow-up. I, th- I felt the first one's very serious and dark and gloomy. Whereas yeah. this one's like an in-your-face fucking action film. Was, did it come out like the ni- like 1990 or when was it? I was, I was a kid. I remember getting all those Terminator 2 toys and just breaking them because I was trying to do the action scenes. <laughs> 91. Uh, 91, yeah. All of them. I had like the 12 inch Arnold that talked and shit. They, not, they merchandised the fuck out of that. I had the, eight, uh, the, the T1, uh, T800 original action figure. Like nice. the one that looked an- anatomically correct for like 1991 or whatever. They were so cool. And at that time, and like. It looked like you drank too much. Arnold <laughs> like, looked like a real badass in it. Yeah, you, you know. know I think I got into leather jackets and shit because of Terminator, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I'm wearing this shit, I and mean, he never wore studded shit. He wasn't that cool. No, because he, he, he stole the one. That he he got. stole the one. Yeah, that was if the thing. If the biker would have had studs in his jacket. Yeah, no, they probably wouldn't. They Could would, you imagine? He's like, like Michael Myers. He's always yeah. found a janitor outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one that's that's part of his directive to find a leather jacket. Find imagine leather being jacket. that biker, you get your ass kicked, and then like you're fucking just laying on the floor, maybe in your underwear. Nude. Nude. Yeah, if, what if, if somebody, he shows up 30 years later it's the same Terminator and you're like, fuck. Yeah, dude. If I'm just laying there, dude, and somebody just comes up, I'm like, I'm also from the future. Don't fuck with me either. <laughs> I'm just going to get naked real yeah, fast. Yeah, he's paying back. He's a biker. He's probably pretty tough. He could probably go beat up Johnny Polo outside and put that on. Yeah. 
It'd be, it'd be just, it just depends on where <laughs> it lands. If he landed in fucking like Naples, Florida or some shit, he'd be wearing a cardigan. Let's make a movie about that guy, the biker. Like, let's see, like, the shot, like, the movie can open with him, like, waking up nude beside, like, a pool table or whatever. Like, oh, I gotta get some clothes. And he, like, he beats up some dude. And it's just this cycle of beating up somebody weaker than you to take their clothes. You're so, gonna get paid for that idea. Or are they gonna screw it? No, somebody's just gonna fucking steal it. It's gonna be like a YouTube skit in like a week. <laughs> It'll be on TikTok. Yeah, a fan film. A fan film. It will be on TikTok because my friends do that shit. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Terminator. Terminator has has other sequels too, but they're does it? Okay. Well, I mean, they, they, they they're, they're not they're not good. But we can go. I didn't hate Salvation, and I don't want to want to do that. The Christian Bell one. Yeah, I didn't hate it. There was a lot, I loved all the practical effects. I like the game. audio from Salvation. Oh, Christian Bell <laughs> yelling at everybody more than I like. It was the DP of all people. Yeah, him losing his fucking shit on because set. he walked in his eyeline. I think. Yeah, he was like, "What the fuck." I love when people were like, when that happened, people were like, he's never going to get work again after this is released. I'm like, you're fucking dumb. Do you know what these people in Hollywood do? Yeah. You think that's going to get him out of work? No, sir. No. Scientology is with these people. Come on. Sam Peckinpah used to, like, Tom Cruise. Lot of round, live rounds in, 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 on studio. Yeah. Fucking uh, William Freaking did it on, on The Exorcist. Yeah. It's just old filmmaking. Right. Now you can't do that Warner anymore. Yeah. You shouldn't. We're all God. Warner Warner Herzog. 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 Almost killed Klaus Kinski. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah. But John Landis. John. <laughs> he was We're never going to get away from this. Vic Morrow, RIP, man. Oh, man. Uh, but, you know, uh, talk about uh, James Cameron. Yeah. Aliens. Aliens is a fantastic Superior sequel. to the first one. And it's, it's one of those movies where, like, I'm not going to fight everybody in this room over this year. <clears throat> Alien yeah. was a good movie, but it's... It, Aliens a is good a, movie? It's a great movie. Yeah, but, it's a, but, it, but it's a totally different... Lance Hendrickson. Feel it was smart. for Aliens. Lance Hendrickson, yeah. As a robot full of cum. Is that what it was? I just wouldn't say it's Is that not calm? No, come on. man. Come it's on. Not. Think about it. You're stuck on this ship. There's like 10 of you. Amniotic fluid Nobody, other nobody's dead. fucking. And then there's this robot that like turns off some <laughs> oh, No, I see. This is good. Everybody's fucking that oh. robot and just filling it with their loads. I've never thought about that. You're the sick bastard. And I then love like it. when he dies, like all there comes there. And everybody's like, oh no, we're caught. But they're like, oh no, you did it too. So it's like. <laughs> Nobody snitching. <laughs> so there's just this like, oh guys, the like, besides robot. the girls, and the, you know, they're like, ah, what the fuck? And the guys are like, I don't know. So when they're doing the knife know. trick, it's like pa oh. Bill Paxton's like, oh shit, it's probably like come. I mean, he's not drinking fucking milk. <laughs> maybe like, he's, uh, he's not gonna argue bitter bones. Maybe that's maybe maybe that's why so it's Ash was, bleeding so quick. Ash was full of cum in the first film. Yeah, great. Just fucking these robots. Right. That's why Sigourney Weaver hated his guts because she couldn't fill them up. Fucking hate that's robots. That's true. Oh my god. She doesn't trust him. Uh, look, she knew something back. was wrong with him. I just think it's a good theory. Uh, that's great. Adam. Lance Hendrickson is the cum dummy in that fucking All aliens. these cum dummies in these movies. <laughs> oh, they're all full of it. it. Oh, is, there a, is there a cum dummy in Dawn of the Dead? One of my other favorite sequels? Dawn of the Dead's amazing. We're just going to skip straight over aliens now. Cum dummies. God right. damn it. Okay, let's go back to aliens. <laughs> <Somebody eight. laughs> really excited for us to talk was, about it. It summed up the guy. movie. Sigourney Weaver, cum dummies. And you know, some stuff happens at the end. Aliens was a that one <laughs> no. was that one. It was an action film. Yeah, it was. It was an action film. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely more of an action film. They they I was trying to get away it. from it. Go ahead. <laughs> and then part three happens. Yeah, Charles. Oh, Charles just, S. Dutton. Oh, this part is, three could have used more cum. <laughs> Man, <laughs> so, it's got some at the end. Wasn't that uh, David Fincher, right? Yeah, David Fincher's <laughs> first film. Can you imagine getting that, so, that kind of fucking pressure on your shoulders? And is that one that was butchered by the studio? Is yes, that the story absolutely. behind it? Yes. Okay. He wants nothing to do with it. If he could do it, it'd be like an Alan Smithy movie. If you know yeah. what Alan Smithy, Smithy stands for, that would have been it. So, Alien 3 or Alien Resurrection, pick one. Alien 3. Oh, Alien 3. Really? I, okay. I like, I don't hate Alien Resurrection. It's just like a fun buddy cop movie with, with everybody. I love, I love Michael Wincott. I love... Uh, um, I can call him help, but I can't remember his goddamn name. It's like Ron Perlman. Why? He's one of my favorite actors. It's just when I get under here, it's like, I don't oh, know forget anybody's Ron. name. I mean, I don't know a lot of names. Well, it's a lot of the but same But you're like cast. Igor Chakaroski Ka. You well, know those the same director of City, Lost, <laughs> City of Lost Children, and, he, it's a good movie. And, and, and he's a visualist, and he took a lot of that cast and put it in this movie, and Ron Perlman is in City of Lost Children. Well, Alien 3 was more of a more of a... Back to the original. Which yeah, I they enjoy. It's a horror. I really film. enjoyed it's, it. You know, as a one kid. alien. Right. It was a. It was a dog alien. Or it depends a, on what version you watch. Alien. Yeah. There's two different versions, and they had they recut it. They cut out, and then they refilmed it. I need to they just fucked that. his movie over. I don't think I. Well, I got the box set. I bought that DVD box or Blu-ray box set. I don't think I ever Called watched three since buying. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Right when uh, Prometheus came out, mm -hmm. they did that box set. Yeah, and which it, I like that. That no, version in there. They, they can't call the director's cut because he wants nothing to do with it, but they put all of his scenes back in. 
there's a whole more there's, there's more you, to the beginning there's, there's isn't it with the director wants nothing to do with it don't you just call it the producer's cut I think so isn't oh, that how Hollywood it's, works yeah <laughs> <laughs> they gotta make money off of it again because like, it didn't it did not do well at the theater at all and I was I loved yeah. I liked it I saw that one at the drive-in man I saw number three at the drive-in yeah. just Charles S. Dutton he you was know, good he, he, was, he was he was he was pretty popular he had that show uh, the, Rock The Rock was great yeah The Wrestler no he no, just Charles had a show Dutton. called Rock it was like oh, okay. it was like a family show he was a garbage man I don't know. Yeah. He didn't have any cum dummies. He was oh, that's great, why I didn't man. watch it. Yeah, he's a he's Step a by step actor. had tons of them. All those people in that movie are fantastic British actors. It's got Charles Danson, I think. Um, he's, the, he's the doctor that basically yeah. wants to stay on the planet. Yeah, I, I can barely remember that movie, man. I, I remember not enjoying it and then just hearing bad shit about it forever. Yeah. Maybe not want to revisit it. Or like spend my two hours. You with should it, go back and look at it. I'll probably will watch it because I didn't hate Alien Resurrection when I went back and watched it, which is because it was on TV when I was. It's a lot more surfing, fun than it deserves to be. Alien Resurrection. House I didn't want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go to Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Dawn. You don't want to go with the rest of the Alien Fuck movies? It. Yeah. No, because we because we're we're gonna do an episode about that one day. So I don't really want to stay on these franchises for too long <clears> and have like <throat> seventy five movies because one day I will have to rewatch all these at once and yeah. then I'll have to have a bigger review other than Come Robots. <laughs> Dawn Unfortunately, of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead, one <laughs> so, of the greatest horror films. Ever. And one of the greatest remakes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was By very far. surprised. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but let's focus on George Romero's vision that was, hey, he had to pare it down. He put some of it in Land of the Dead because he wanted more of a post-apocalyptic kind of feel to the movie because he just didn't have the money. But Dawn of the Dead, man. I mean, he did, he did that in Day of the Dead, but yeah. and even further in Land of the Dead. But Dawn of the Dead is... On that scale and that low budget that they did, and thank you, Dario Argento, for making this film happen. He literally flew him to Italy in a little hotel, and they wrote the script. Yeah. That's how he made it happen. You He's could like, see the influence. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many cuts of that movie, too. Yeah. Yeah, there is. I, I own probably nine copies of it, <laughs> and I don't know how many of them are different. I think Dawn of the Dead and the Evil Dead movies I own more than any other like horror thing. Oh, I just yeah. feel like I rebuy them every fucking time. They're like, well, this one comes with an extra disc with an interview that's actually on the first one you bought in 2001, but you fucking forgot. So yeah. here it is again. Uh, no, that's by far one of the best sequels. I mean, Night of the Living Dead is a great movie, but it's does it hold up over time? Kind of, sort of. If I show it to my kids, probably not. Dawn of the Dead kind of held up, <laughs> and yeah. I was shocked. They didn't like the blood. Oh, that's yeah, a, we talked about that's it. That's always my test is to show it because, you know, my kids are, you know, the teenager and then one that's almost a teen. And I always try to, like, show movies to them around the time I saw it to see how they react, to see if it did hold up. The blood on it throws them off, though, because it just looks, it does look cartoony. It, yeah, it looks cartoony, but that it's was... old stage. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was... Uh, formula well, that they still use. It's very much like those Italian movies. But would your kids, yeah. like, you show kids it now, they'd be like, why are they Why are they going there to shop? Wouldn't they just, like, if you made Dawn of the Dead now, you'd have to go to an Amazon well, Fulfillment they, Center or something? They, <laughs> they understand what a mall is, because Dad used to have a lot of power in this world, and he used to manage a few stores. Yep, let's go to Best Buy. <laughs> they grew up in back rooms when they were little. <laughs> Before I got the fuck out of that life. Oh my but, god! Like uh, and yeah, it's just uh, Tom Savini. You know his work in, and he's and he acts really well in it. I like the little biker gang gimmick. I love that whole. He looks like whole, a little, like subplot. Yeah, no, it's just the whole like Ooh, capitalism's bad. Hell yeah, it is. Let's like, take the money anyways. Look I, where it's gotten us. Every time I talk to people about Dawn of the Dead, they give me this whole like fucking political talk about what every little thing means in it, and I'm like. I like zombies and blood. <laughs> I'm a simple man, but that's cool too. If you notice all that shit, that's awesome. Yeah, it's all in there. I, I fucking just like, fuck that mall. Have you been to that mall? No, I have not been to the mall. No. Yeah, I have a piece of it though. I know, it's completely different. It's fucking weird. I went there, I did Steel City uh, probably 10 years ago, and of course like someone there from the mall was handing out these cards going like, we got a zombie museum. You go in there, it looks nothing like the movie now. Not at all. And then if you walk to like this little corner store, it's like a toy store type gimmick, but there's a zombie museum on the back with a few props. So it's kind of like, eh, oh wow, yeah, we got a zombie mu museum. But do you really? Yeah, I feel bad for people that probably drive there to go to that set, and there's just nothing there outside of like, I mean, it's literally the size of this room that we're in right now. Yeah, well, I know that like the, the skating rink's gone, the escalators moved. Everything's, I mean, everything's like everything, everything looks different. Yeah, I've, I've, I have friends. That, we have friends that, like the Vogels. Yeah, there's uh, a picture somewhere. At least when I went to the mall, there's a picture of the original mall. And then when you look at it and you look at the mall you're in, you're like, you could have put this picture anywhere and told me yeah. that's the mall. So you, you just get depressed and go get a Cinnabon and you're just yeah. go home. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Auntie Anne's and get me a fucking 
pretzel. <laughs> Whatever they have. Pretzel dogs. Zombie pretzel dogs? Oh, God, I See, hate that place. That place is fucking stupid. I think they went out of business because of the pandemic. So. <laughs> but Dawn of the Dead is one of those rare instances where the sequel is arguably better than the original. Yeah, I could agree with that. I, I agree. I, I think you got to look at them differently, dude, than when they came out and definitely like how original Night of the Living Dead was at that time. Oh, groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Holy just shit. Just with, with everything that happens. In it. And I, so, and it, it launched George Romero's career, even though he didn't make like a dime off of it. I mean, we could all own the rights to it. It's public domain. Oh, yeah, the Night of the Living Dead, yeah. That's why everybody in the world re-releases it and there's like fucking Sid Haig versions of these movies. And oh, God, yeah. That's supposed to be a prequel. Is it really? Night of the Dead 3D is like, it technically, it's in the same uh, like time frame. It's not, oh, yeah. man. I feel like everybody uses <clears throat> Night of the Living Dead for things. Like when you go, if you go online and type in Night of the Living Dead, then how many variations of this movie like actually exist? A lot. Yeah. I oh, thought the remake was decent for that one. Oh, Nyland did? Yeah, they, yeah, he actually did that to try to get the rights back to at least that yeah. name. So uh, he was originally going to direct Night of Living Dead, the remake, with, but Thomas Savini did it. And Thomas Savini didn't even get to do his vision because nice. of time and money. Yeah. It was going to be a black and white movie. It was going to be a lot more POV. But that's for a whole other episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely, I can't remember what episode of, actually, yeah, uh, when Joe Bob shows Maniac, Maniac, if you go to that, he has Thomas Savini on there, and he talks quite a bit about, you know, doing Dawn of the Dead. So, yeah. Check that out, because his interview is way more fulfilling than listening to me. Dave, where are we going? Where are we going from here? Ooh, where are you steering us? We're we we just going to leave Dawn of the Dead. Let's leave this mall. Terrible Blood Evil was bad. made by 3M. Yeah, it's 3M. Yeah. 3M. Yeah, I think that's like the Dick Smith uh, blood that they were still using back then, and the stage, the stage blood that they were using. It's uh, like very hammer-like. It's the color of these, you know, coasters. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, been, it's, yeah. our, it's the color of our coasters. Yeah, it's just a super bright red. <laughs> it does take you out of it a little bit if you're not used to that. Like, for me, when I'm like fucking 10 or 11, didn't matter. But now that they're like the gore is done so well in horror movies, my kids have seen like fucking Feast and all these like new hatchets and all these newer horror franchises where they try to make things, even though it sprays out and it's super gross and over the top, the color is realistic. It looks like blood. And then you go watch Dawn of the Dead, which has this very serious tone, and then they bleed out this like fucking pink crayola. It's almost like, pink. Yeah, like, yeah. A, like, a, like a, a melted crayon. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, can go, we, can, on, we can go to one you just mentioned Feast. Feast, Feast 2, Sloppy Seconds. Sloppy Seconds. Oh, my gosh. Man, that was, I remember seeing that, because that was part of, uh, wasn't that, that was part of a, a So the first piece was part of something. Project Greenlight, yeah, which Project was Matt Greenlight Damon and Ben Affleck's show on, I think, HBO or Showtime, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, they weren't making any money off these movies they were trying to make. Yeah. And they were like, let's do a horror film. Let's do a horror film. And so Feast comes out, ends up being amazing. It's kind of like meta and shit. You know, you have your... They know all like the horror movie tropes. So you know your main guy shows up and he's like, "I'm the guy that's here to save your asses," and he's instantly like sucked through a fucking window and murdered. And speaking of cum, so like it's like mouth fucked to death, and then the monster <laughs> just shoots loads everywhere. This is the cum episode. Uh, but yeah, it's good. It had a great cast. Jason Muses in it, which is really Gotham's weird. Organic. Was yeah. it Henry Rollins? In yes, the first he is. One? Henry Rollins is a badass in it. Well, yeah. not really a badass, For as long as he but he does he, he does a great job in it. Uh, he's not wrong turn Henry Rollins in this one. <laughs> so it doesn't go fucking John Rambo. I think he's like a what is he like a fitness instruct instructor yeah. or something? I just shit? remember him like he, they, they put him in a white collared shirt. Like, That's what, what the it fuck is. is yeah, <laughs> seen him dressed Rollins like that. It's very looking like weird. a scientist or something. Uh, no, I, I love the first Feast, and I never expected it to get a sequel because of the type of movie it was and why it was made and all that shit. Of course, Feast Two Sloppy Seconds comes out like two years later, and it turns in it's almost a straight comedy. I mean, it's so over the top with everything they do, but it's ridiculous. I, yeah. I they took it in more of a what I would perceive as an old fashioned grindhouse way. Those they other did. two films, oh, they were just like, no, no, no. This is before Hatchet. This is before the movie Grindhouse even came out. I was like, we're doing it like this, motherfuckers. Yeah. Oh no, it's exactly what that was. And I loved it. And two, uh, two and three kind of go top. together. They yeah. they run together because they have like some of the same cast or whatever in it. It's like what uh, they would have, that crew would have made a Death Race sequel. I've been like, that's it. That's how it should be. Yeah. Totally they, over the top. I think they all kind of vanished that they're. Feast that the yeah, franchise over. Yeah, yeah, they gave that guy such a hard time because they didn't see his vision in the first film. And then when he came out, they were like, we had no idea that it was going to be like this. They're like, yeah. if you would just listen to me, I know I'm introverted, I don't talk a lot, I'm not yeah. my first time director, but I know what a good horror film is. Well, at that time, it was... It was kind of crazy because, I mean, Scream had already poked fun at the horror genre a little bit. 
But this one like went all out. I mean, you had the characters show up with like their title of what they're supposed to be in this yeah. movie and how long they're supposed to survive. I love that the little title, yeah, yeah, little, almost like Cobra Commander like game card like thing, whatever. The monsters, whatever the fuck they were supposed to be, looked really fucking cool. Um, they had to change those because once they realized the movie was actually pretty good, they gave them more money to make them look better. Oh, really? When yeah, you first it. see them, that was supposed to be it. Hmm. And they're like, "Wow, this is okay. Let's let's put some more money into this." And, and then when they when the shroud comes off, yeah. the, or the fake head. That was all later. Yeah, it was all insert shots. It has tremors vibes. Yeah, you know, yeah. the first one definitely feels like like a meta tremors movie. Yeah, uh, stuck in a bar. Of, yeah, just a bunch of people stuck in a bar in like this middle of the desert, no escape. And these fucking monsters are coming at you. Except you don't got like sand penises coming at you. Yeah, you know, like they didn't describe anything. So yeah. This is happening right now. No, it's awesome. And, and these two sloppy seconds just follows up on that, but it gets like it gets way more over the top. I think the the bikers the are bi- coming in. Yeah, yeah the, bikers <laughs> so good. the bikers come in. Like, what the fuck's going on? Then somebody dies immediately. Yeah, there's a little people like there's like a gang. Yes. Of people. I can't remember what. Where, where, did they wear a wrestling mask? I feel like there's a wrestling mask. I think that might have been. Uh, maybe I just want, maybe I just wanted that to be a thing, but maybe not. Then, you just want all the lucha in there, like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I wanted like El Santo and fucking Blue Demon, but like in small people form. That's a movie right there. We gotta make that. Oh, yes. I got ten bucks. <laughs> I got ten bucks. You'll find me someone. <clears throat> well, yeah. other other movies you mentioned. You also mentioned Hatchet, the Hatchet series. Yeah, the Hatchet series. I mean, that's another one that can't. I, I love these movies that were like the directors come out of nowhere. You know, they they weren't big Hollywood films. They they were pretty much that was straight to DVD and fans made these things fucking happen. Yeah. And you know, Adam Green wasn't really well known when Hatchet hit. I remember this is back when you would go to a movie's website. <laughs> so there was like that <laughs> the legend of Victor Crowley when you would go to the website and you can click around and you would go through like the swamp and shit. It's like terrible. I mean, if you remember the internet like two thousand five, you know what I'm talking about. Terrible clippy ass like screen and shit. Like it's got a lot of viruses, man. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah you know that All li- stuff I like that lime wire, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what that is. Oh, I'm yeah. wire? Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, that'll, get, that'll kill your computer. But man, like, yeah, they, they, I mean, they created a new slasher guy. And, like, when's the last time we've had one of those? Like, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, all these guys are from the 80s, and then we get Victor Crowley. With a, who's an iconic person playing that role. Playing that role, because you bring Kane Hodder from the Friday the 13th franchise, who kind of got fucked out of that. You know, they kind of tossed him to the side after, what, three movies, I mm-hmm. guess? Yeah. Uh, so it was cool to see him in that role. You could tell it's Kane Hodder when you just watch him walk and move. Kane just is Kane. And it works, though. His weird, like, limp or big guy, like, fucking wobble walk fucking works. Yeah. Uh, the special effects in that are fucking awesome. Yeah. They, they, super over the top. They really they really sold you on the first one, and then the sequels just yeah. get better and better. I thought the characters got better. As well, they, they went from Zemo. We went from teenagers to, like, like. More. And you bring in Daniel Harris. So Absolutely. Daniel Harris replaced the chick from the original. Yeah. So that's the only like character change you have. Uh, Perry Shen has this running joke where he appears as like a different character. And I one. love him though. They even uh, for Victor Crowley, which is the fourth one. Yeah, yeah it's the fourth yeah. one. The fourth one. They released a book called I Survivor that he's like selling in the movie, but they actually wrote the book and put it out. So. Oh, like real. And it's written like a survivalist book. Like he actually survived this old Victor Crowley oh, wow. massacre. Adam Green wrote it to, like, you know, when, if someone finds it on shelves in, like, 50 years, they'll read it like it's a real story. Because it's, like, I mean, it's literally his Perry Shent's face on it, in character, says, I Survivor, how I survived, like, the Swamp Massacre. And it's, like, a three, four hundred page book about the massacre, surviving it. Yeah, that's pretty Perry Yeah, that's the list of things to buy. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But one thing I do like with sequels, I like when sequels connect everything together, and every Hatchet movie runs together. Uh, much like the first couple Friday the 13th, even though most people don't notice that they do, like, they're all, like, dated. They shouldn't be called fucking Friday anymore, but whatever. Fucking That's Friday. Like, it'd be weird if it was, like, Friday the 13th. Saturday, Saturday the 15th. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday the 16th. What are they Thank God it's Monday. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, the part two just takes place, like, right after. I mean, literally, as soon as it starts, they show you what happened at the end of the first one, but they just change the actress. So they redo it, and they're like, oh, yep, Danielle Harris now. Yeah. Covered in blood, gets tries to tell the town, hey, everything was fucked. No one believes you. Nope. That's how it works. And you restart the same story. And, of course, they're all going there cleaning up all the fucking bodies, which is, you brought in a uh, dude from People Under Stairs. 
because he brings in so many like horror icons for these. So and I get them; they all kind of run together for me. Uh, Tony Todd, Tony of course. Robert England's in one. Yeah, yeah Robert uh, Robert England's the very first one. Start of the first one. Yeah. Part two, yeah, Ra's in part two. Yeah, there's so many fantastic uh, icons in these films. Because part two is where they get the hunting gang together. She shows up and they're trying to get this gang to come back. So you had. Uh, R.A. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman makes a cameo appearance. Tony Todd comes back. Tony Todd actually gets a big role in this. Yeah, the he first does. one, he's just the guy that runs like the the boat establishment or the swamp tour thing. And this one, it becomes like a more like evil and maniacal Reverend Zombie. Reverend Zombie. He actually goes on the tour with them. So you get some pretty cool scenes out of that. Derek Mears. Derek Mears pops up. Two and three run together for me, so I'm probably referencing characters Tom from both Holland of them. Is in them. Tom Holland's her dad, yeah. and uh, Uncle he, Bob. He pops up in part. Or Uncle, yeah, Uncle Bob in part three, right? Yes. Yeah. So part Holland's two. part. Holland's part two. Yes, Tom Holland's part two. See, oh my god, like no, two. It's, totally it's, it's, it's okay the because they, they they run together. They all They're run all together, so yeah. it's all yeah. So Derek Mears, yeah. So Derek Mears had to be part three because he's with the SWAT team yep. that comes. But they pull anyway. out Felicia Rose is in. I think she's in Victor Crowley. Felicia Rose is in Victor Crowley. Is that, is that Gallagher? There's so many. Yeah, yeah, that's a fan making fan movies, and it's not like necessarily like a Rob Zombie version. He doesn't even have that kind of money. But God, the, the quality of the Hatchet films yeah. is amazing. Yeah, especially for the budget and what he puts into it. I mean, he works his ass off on these movies. I love, and he also did Frozen, which we'll talk. About. We're going to do an Adam Green episode one day just to talk about all the shit he's done. Yeah, but. Yeah, those those four hatchet movies, and it looks like we're probably getting a part five, judging by like the end of four. Yeah, I'm excited. It's like my favorite, probably my favorite franchise. Yeah, it's one Reset. of those. Every time it comes out, Reset I'm like, I kind of groan, and I'm like, <clears throat> I'm happily surprised. Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, we're it, gonna just keep doing these. Oh, well, fuck, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, it's his baby, and it was his goal is to create a new like horror icon, and like since what Jason and Freddy, who who have we had since then? We didn't get any. Yeah. 90s gave us Ghostface. Ghostface. Yeah. That's the only one I can really think. 2000s of. gave well, us. There are well, there are many, but they're not Leslie they're not Grant. iconic anymore. They're not like they're not that. But who gave us ones that end up getting toys? Right. Exactly. Yo, know, like new new characters that got like toys and all this shit. Well, actually, just now got a toy. The Toonie Terrors for Victor Crowley just came out, and he's got a NECA one coming out in January. And gets that many sequels, isn't straight to DVD, isn't just some indie fucking dork that's making a ten dollar movie going like, oh my character is in all these. He's the, he's gonna be the new one. I Leslie Vernon was in the running, but Yeah. God, I would I wish they could have We made never it. got a sequel. That's like speaking of sequels we never got. It was fucking before the mask. Well that yeah. would have been prequel, cool, but that would have been really cool. I yeah. would have enjoyed that. Yeah, but it's it's hard to create a new like icon that horror fans care about. And he did it with Victor Crowley. Yeah. Oh, what else has been on the match? It like I said, Ghostface, Victor Crowley. There's probably someone else I'm forgetting. There's but. a lot, but they're not. It's not. That's what I'm saying. That, that, but they're, they're not on the top of your your brain. They're not. Yeah, they're, 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 they're not. Tip your tone. Yeah, but they're more you of like Pennywise. A, You've got all these. Well, things Pennywise that, wasn't just created. Right, uh, it was from a book. And, I mean, and it's are also on a the remake, pretty much. Terrifier, yeah. like the the, the Terrifier. Terrifier. Yeah, Art no, the Clown movie thing is, is not starting. fantastic. The effects are amazing. The effects, yeah, but the story is like she's gonna fall down. Fuck, really? Okay. Yeah, this is what's gonna happen. Fuck. Well, really? they're pretty much living off the the vagina scene. That's a, it's a fucking it's a great game, scene, man. It's, crazy. it's straight up Ed Gein yeah. right there. It's beautiful. Uh, those it's scenes beautiful. are great, and that and like thirteen year old Steve loves those movies but you know 45 I'm like you know give me give me a little story yeah I mean, <laughs> give me something I actually want to grasp upon to uh, Hostel I thought Hostel 2 was better than the Hostel way 1 way better because I liked the characters way better Hostel 2 who stars in that one <clears throat> God, I'll tell you in a second I'm just Hostel 1 I remember liking I couldn't that. give a shit less you about like it? any of the well, people the in Hostel 1 the argument is like you, I want you to hate them it's like yeah, you, you say that but like I really I'm don't not, like it I'm not invested days. I was like fucking kill them who gives a shit man right. And, but it also affected me like the effects didn't affect me. I I like Hostel when a movie. Was like, I like when I go see a movie knowing Whoa. what to expect and they kind of like do a hard left like that. I like that the first forty five minutes of Hostel are just like it's like I'm watching Euro Trip or whatever. It's true, that's what true. it is. Yeah. Because when that when that first guy gets killed, you're like, oh, what the fuck. Like you didn't, I didn't see it coming. But the whole time you're watching it, wondering when it's gonna happen, and then when it happens, you're like, oh fuck. Like, I don't know. I'll, I like that. Who who started Hostel 2? Hostel 2... Uh, you fucker. You were looking it up forever ago. You stop. Doing sorry. that is... Lauren German. Is that... Is that Lauren German. I don't know fuck that yeah, is. Actually. I don't know why I asked. Yeah. Fuck you. Uh, the <laughs> chick from, like, Welcome fuck. to the Dollhouse is in it. And, I thought know. I knew the main guy, but I, mean, I guess I don't. Oh, 
Well, the these s- are all women. Yeah, the, the second one was all women. Oh, okay. Part three is the casino one, right? The Vegas betting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. Yeah. Um, but that, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Hostel Three. Uh, Hostel Two. <laughs> Hostel Two. Yeah. See, I can't even remember. I remember liking it, but I can't fucking remember. I it just, now. I just felt like I could, I like, I got to know the characters a little bit more, and I, I, we're like, they're all, they're all fucking douchebags. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, my girlfriend at the time, she's like, "Oh, it's because they're your chicks and you're connected." I was like, no, "No, it's because they're one. The actresses are much better, and mm-hmm. they're written much better, and they're more sympathetic." But they're still like they're still being flighty and assholes themselves. They're not treating yeah. everybody fucking good. I mean, they had the first film, all the, all the guys are douchebags, and you're like, "Fuck, this is like American World in fucking Paris." I hate these motherfuckers. American World in Paris. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh god. I'm not bringing up that goddamn sequel, even let's though I just did. Let's not talk about that one. <laughs> That's a we sequel. Could, we could just skip straight to Blade Two if we're gonna do that. Amazing. Ron Amazing. Perlman. Ron, Ron Perlman. In case I forgot his name, his name is Ron Perlman, Steve. <laughs> if you ever want to see Norman Reedus' best acting job, get him in Blade 2. Oh, yeah. Where he's trying to act like the gangster white boy. I told you, B. He keeps oh, calling him fucking he's B. Calling you know him B. Uh, that's a really fantastic film from top to bottom. And, and he effects. looks like he smells really bad when you look at him. He does. Movie. He looks like he looks like Jason from Rob Zombie. I mean, for, uh, Michael Myers from Rob Zombie movies. Yeah, I don't like, like it. Living in the trash, I, mean, dude. I don't like, yeah, that, if smell of vision was a comes thing, back. that would suck. Yeah, you got Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes Guillermo del Toro. Great. The soundtrack, the effects, the integration of CG and practical was almost seamless. I mean, there's a couple of like bad Blade 2 is way better than Blade 1 and holds up. Yeah, it does. It and does. it's a hundred times better than Blade Three. The only reason I like Blade Three is because it's funny with Triple Ryan H Rose. and Parker Posey. Yeah, yeah, Triple H. I get scared when Dracula punches through the fucking ground. I was yeah. like, "You're a vampire, dude, looking for another vampire." What do you think? Why are you fucking screaming? Ah! I, what he wants. <laughs> I can't that. even fucking. Uh, He's the game. Blade Trinity. Oh yeah, shit. it's bad. That's I know what... they were trying to do that spinoff with uh, Ryan Reynolds and Jessica yeah. Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what pissed off Wesley Snipes big time, and you can tell because a lot of the scenes he wasn't even in, they used his stunt double. Yeah. And if you watch it closely, you can see like acting. It's because just like he's the like, side of his head. he's like, hey, motherfuckers, I got taxes due, so we gotta make Blade Four, <laughs> not this. <laughs> or I'm gonna go to jail. Didn't work out. But Plus, hey, he's actually the, he was the producer of Blade Three. Like, he should have had so much more say. I and know, just cut him out. but you want Blade Four because you're not getting Drop Zone Two, Wesley. <laughs> but they're not gonna make White Man Can't Jump twice or whatever the fuck. But you know what was announced this week? White Man Can't Jump Two? No. Fuck. Demolition Man sequel. Oh yeah. But he's dead. Simon's there. He's gonna Simon. be in it. They're they're like Simon? He's 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 signed on to it. They'll clone him like fucking you know. They're a clone. They're, they're a clone. They ages forty years. Yeah. That's weird. They wipe yeah. their ass with seashells. They can clone Buster. Maybe Snipes. they maybe they clone him, and put him back in jail. Does oh. he even have hair anymore? I don't know. You gotta have the blonde hair if you're gonna be Simon. Yeah, but you can do like a ruby rod fucking wig. Fuck it. You do that. I don't like what's happening. All right, well, I want Drop Zone 2. I don't want to fucking. Uh, Dave, take us somewhere else. Get us out of here. Dr. Blade, Sleep. Blade 2 is great. Dr. Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. Okay, this is a movie that was very polarizing for fans. I want to know your all's opinion. I slept. Damn. Through it twice. I tried twice. It didn't work out. Yeah, I saw it in theater. Enjoyed it. <clears> uh, because I also knew a lot of the backstory, so I was really giving it a whole lot of credit. And then I bought the Blu-ray with the director's cut, or the extended, I think it is the director's cut. And it's even better. Uh, I don't I was, think I, I was, hated I was, it. I, just I was a big it. fan, and I liked what he had to struggle with. I liked the director anyways, but like I liked what he had to struggle with trying to make this movie make sense to fans of the book and the movie. He's like, I'm making a fucking movie sequel, so it's going to have to be, it's going to have to continue. Like in the, in the book, you know, the Stanley or the Overlook blows up, so there is no hotel and he's like well that's not what happens in the movie I love all the struggle if you know the behind the scenes stuff there's a lot of story there that he he literally went to Stephen excuse me Stephen King and he was like I really need you to back me and I'm trying to I'm, I'm going to convince you to back me but if you don't then I'm not doing this movie and then at the end of the conversation he was like alright man make your movie for Dr. Slate yeah hmm. Stephen King's really chilled out since he stopped doing cocaine uh, yeah because how much he hates the original Shining and what the ending is and he was like I have to keep that ending I'm changing your narrative. So this isn't based on the book? This is just a movie? It is based on the book, but it's also based on the film because, like okay. I said, he had to be like, look, I'm making a movie, not a sequel to a book. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, me watching the movie, I, I really, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Um, I haven't watched it a second time, 
but uh, after I watched it, it was on HBO and it has extra features. <laughs> and after I watched it, I was like, oh, let's see what the extra features were. It was the director's cut. I was so pissed. that I recommend it. Yeah, I really want to go back and watch it, but I just it's too soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too soon. It's too soon. Did it hurt you, Dave? It hurt me. And oh, I, I, I fell asleep both times just trying to watch it. But no, I mean, that's fine. I don't, th- but I don't think I hated it. I just, I remember not dislike like hating it or anything. I just was like, yeah, it's because it's bedtime. It just happens sometimes. Sometimes you There's watch some movie movies. I do that to me. Hellboy two. Hellboy two. It's every beautiful. Back to Guillermo del Toro <clears throat> saving. You know, like fuck yeah, dude. A sequel that works. I'll every that time way. that I've watched that movie with Rachel, she just falls asleep. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. Some people can't take too much action though. Maybe that's what it is. I've had friends who's like, man, it's just, if it's all action, I'm just going to go to bed. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that's I the love... choreography. You're not into, like, the dance of what they're doing. You're creating. So I maybe love that's what it is with her. I'm yeah. not going to tell you what that's what her problem is. I'm just saying, I was, I was with somebody. I was like, what's the problem here? And they're like, dude, I just, uh, action parts. It's just one of those, it's just really? one of those movies. Yeah. I like, I really like Hellboy 2. I, I think. Uh, Golden Army. Yeah. I, it's I, better than the first one. Yeah. I think they're all, I think they're all really good, actually. I, I like the Hellboy movies, but. Yeah. I like the remake. They're, I like the remake too. Everybody yeah, shit on it. The remake, remake was violent really good. and really dirty and gritty and <clears> more <throat> close to the comics actually. But people, that's a, that's a, it's a film series that you either love it or you hate it. You don't really see a whole lot of people like. Eh. Was that's like, true. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, it was just like ah, it sucked or it was really good. Well, it kind of hit. It hit before the comic book boom. So like the first one and the sequel, I'm pretty sure I was in high school, like fresh out of high school when the second one came out. Yeah. If it would have come out a little later, it would have been bigger. He did Blade Two. To be able to do Hellboy first, the first Hellboy. That's the, that, that was makes part sense. of the contract, from what I understand. Yeah, he was like, "Yeah, no, I'll totally, I'll, I'll, I'll do this movie. It's gonna be great." And then, you know, he he sold him on Blade Two, and he's like, "Well, I want to do this movie that I have a passion project of mine." Yeah, Hellboy. And they're like, "Who?" I wish what? they would do BPRD. That would be really that cool. That would be awesome. But it's probably never gonna happen. That almost seemed like what they were sort of trying to do with the new Hellboy series. I feel like like Netflix could do something like that. Netflix is picking up some weird shit now. It like, be a series. There's Good like, idea. But Netflix, you know, picking up Umbrella Academy and then other networks. I forgot who has the boys. Prime has the boys. Like, there's all kinds of like kind of weird shit getting picked up now. So, that also gives me violent shit. B- yeah, up. that great. gives me hope for BPRD. Good. Yeah, especially the boys. I was kind of shocked by that. Umbrella Woo. Academy is more like PG-13. The comics. I mean, sometimes they push it a little bit, but. The boys is fucked. And same with Preacher. Preacher's fucked. And I, I was shocked that that got a series. But that was AMC, so they did yeah. dial it back a little bit. As much as they had to. They did let some shit slide. So you've got some other ones on here, Steve. You've got Slumber Party Massacre. Oh, yeah. Does he? I didn't see yeah, that on it. It's just a slumber party. party. This is a slumber party. I'm wearing the shirt. Oh, shit. Spoiler. I had the shirt on last week, too, because I'm fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably my favorite sequel uh, ever. I feel like this one's come up a lot. Wait, more than T2? <laughs> totally different kind of genre. Slower totally Party Massacre 2 is not my favorite sequel of all time, but I, I do really enjoy it. I like the dude that break dances, but he's supposed to be rockabilly. Like, whenever you do like a rockabilly show and some dude's like break dancing, like the fuck? Yeah. Like, it's the weirdest fucking thing. This dude has an identity. We did, a, we did a dive on this movie already, actually. We did do a dive on it because. Uh, uh, the Heavy last metal. drive-in yeah. did a thing. You know, they showed it, and they went into about how this the main guy's actually like a musician and had like one album came out, and it was funny to watch it shoot up in price on eBay and once it was one, covered on the oh show. One God. recently when they did the uh, the last drive-in. Uh, yeah, auction. they did that auction recently and sold a copy for like six hundred bucks when they Holy were in this. Shit. Yeah, because people were going batshit crazy on that auction. Don't know why. Somebody must have been running up those prices. But uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Toy collectors. Toy collect motherfuckers. Toy sellers. Toy yeah. sellers. But yeah, it, it's just a goofy, over-the-top sequel. This fucking guitar has like a drill on the end of it. So the first one takes itself pretty seriously. And they have like Does the it? normal drill. Well, it's a satire film, but it's not. Well, it's a it's satire, not, but not, it's not. writing jokes. It's not as like in your face with it. Yeah. It's more of like, yeah, it's funny and it is satire, but it's not like... He's got a guitar that's a fucking drill, and there's a girl band that plays in his house while their boyfriend's, like, set, like, on the floor, like, yeah, I think great, this is the best. <laughs> like, it's the corniest, weirdest shit. And they sound like Bananarama. Yeah, they do. I can appreciate that, though. Silence of the Lambs, Steve, because you've got that up there. And it, it's Speaking of Bananarama. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's weird for me because most people, I know Silence of the Lambs is a sequel. It is a sequel. It is a sequel, but for most people, that's the first one. I've never seen Silence of the Lambs. And that makes sense. Ever? Ever. Well, yeah. there's there's come in that movie, too. There's, a, there's Yeah, and it's, I, it looks real. I've seen clips, but I've never 
sat through it. Yeah, Oscar worthy, uh, definitely. definitely. Oh, that's probably why I won't watch it. Yeah, no, no it's it's uh, it was it was so good that people wanted to not call it a horror film, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, I've heard all those stories. This is a thriller. Great. Like fuck off. This is a this fuck you, man. Go read the book and tell me it's not based on a horror. Like those books are extremely graphic. Oh, they are. Watch the watch watch the Hannibal TV show. The I've Hannibal talk, TV show. I've talked about is that before. Even closer to the books than any of the films. As extreme as like say Hannibal and Hannibal Rising is. Like the fucking show is like whoa. What the fuck is and they Hannibal got away with Rising? It. Hannibal Rising is the prequel that they 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 that he actually wrote. Thomas Harris wrote and they made a movie out of it. Really? Yeah, yeah, that was. It's like it's like Hannibal in his teen years. I remember Hannibal. College. Hannibal yeah. came out back when I was uh, working at a video game store that bought back DVDs, and that was one of my ones that people were always breaking me. I had like a drawer <laughs> full of fucking Hannibal. <clears throat> yeah, Hannibal Rising came out in two thousand seven. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so that, that was at Hollywood Video then. I don't fucking remember. Was that a blockbuster exclusive? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. It was it a, it theater, a really? movie. And they they did it, but they did a pretty good job with that film. I I didn't. I'm, it's like I did it grow. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll watch the fucking Hannibal yeah. Rising. Oh, it's in that bad. Uh, so the first film was called Manhunter. Manhunter, I love. Okay, which is kind of funny. And there's a bad, massive bomb. They didn't know what to do with it. They didn't. They didn't know how to release yeah. it. You know, it looks like a crime noir. It's just, but it is. It's it's really. It's like in the middle of fucking of the '80s, right in the middle of Miami Vice, which is the same guy who created Miami Vice made this film. And then Silence of the Lambs comes out. Jonathan Demme, who comes out of the Roger Corman school of film, makes a, a fucking Academy Award winning. winning Horror movie. So is the idea of it to be a sequel originally? Like it's like we're a sequel. Well, to it follows. It, it it follows Manhunter okay. because the uh, the character. Of None of this is based on a book, though. Right? Is this based on all a book of them? Yes. Okay, right. so I didn't know the shit. That's Thomas I'm Harris to... wrote all the books except okay. he obviously didn't write the the, the series, but he wrote a book to, for all these movies. Okay, that explains how a movie that bombed um, can get a sequel. Then, D- like D- that. Dino De Laurentiis owns the right to the Hannibal Lecter character from forever, and his company does. And um, so anytime they have to make anything, he has to say, or his company does it, he's dead. So that's the thing with the Hannibal show, is like it doesn't follow anything. It follows it all pretty well, but it's like it changes the narrative just enough to where the characters are there, but the story's a little bit different. Is this similar to Base Motel? Yes, very much. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, in, in the Hannibal, yeah, like, they go into Red Dragon eventually. Yeah, Red Dragon, is obviously, the re- is, a, I guess, supposed to be more of a faithful telling of... Uh, of Manhunter, but uh, I don't know. I, I prefer Manhunter because I think that Edward Norton is kind of flat in that film. Anthony Hopkins is is, is they write, they write extra lines for him. There's a lot of stuff going on in Red Dragon. Just Dragon trying to find a reason day. to have him in Ralph, there. Ray Fiennes is fine, but he's not yeah. Tom Noonan. Tom Ray Noonan is fucking is fine. he's That's fine as, as the Red Dragon. He is. Well, if you watch if you watch the show, it was uh, oh shit, I forgot the guy's goddamn name. What the which main one? Guy? Yeah, Mad. The guy that Mad plays Mads. no, not Mads Mickelson. The guy that plays the Red Dragon. He's a. Uh, uh, he was in. He he was in the Hobbit. I'll come back to it. <laughs> Bilbo, Bilbo, Richard, 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 Bilbo Dragon, Richard, Richard Armitage. <laughs> always Bilbo Lord Dragon with this guy. He was really good in it. I did. I could not good enough for me to remember his name. So let's yeah. just go to Phantasm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to clip the mic. <laughs> so let's just go to Phantasm. Let's just go to Phantasm. That's got. That's I'm got not sequel, prepared right? to talk about Phantasm. Phantasm we gotta do a whole is episode a... about fucking Phantasm. Oh, you're like, right. We yeah, can. that's right. Yeah. And about, I mean, go drink some of that tea. And about how they destroyed the Cuda. <laughs> but we, I mean, okay, we have Number Elm Strip there. We have Silence Lambs, Feast, Blade Two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. Like we the, could talk the Scream to, trilogy. I feel like we could talk Ride about of Frankenstein. Candyman. I think actually, uh, Failure of the Flesh is a better film than the first. One. What the fuck? Yeah, I know it's weird. Why? I just like the I like the direction. I like the the I like his his changed look. I just like the actors better. I don't. Know, I like the first film. Okay. It's the same thing. It's very groundbreaking, but I just thought they did it better in the second one. All right. No, you can hate me. It's great. No, that's fine. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna even have words. I'm not gonna <laughs> you just, you, you don't even want to acknowledge your existence or your. That's thoughts. fine. Let's skip it. Then. I don't really. I don't really like two or three. Gotta be honest. Like at I, all. Yeah, at all. Oh wow. Like, okay, that's awesome. Just one of those weird things. I never liked the sequels. Mm. I like Candyman. I never loved Candyman, so maybe that's why I'm not in love with the sequels. I guess it's, it's always been. I always thought it was terrifying. When I was a kid, I thought it was like the scariest fucking thing, and it was always fun to lock your friend in a room and make them say it, and yeah. they can't come out. I mean, I guess most people do it as a joke, but we would just lock each other in rooms and shit. <laughs> like, ah, fuck you, you're gonna die. You know well, what? Didn't die. I was gonna say Scream Two. That was another big one. Scream 2, I love, and I'm probably going to get shit for that. No, you shouldn't. I think it's, it's like an improvement. I wish they did. a fucking fantastic film. I wish they didn't make Scream 3. I wish they didn't make Scream 4. I'm still going to go see 5 because I'm a fucking Mark, but 
2 was like the pinnacle of that franchise for me. I thought it was awesome. Like, yeah. I thought it was a great follow-up. I didn't know what they could really do for, like, the reason to be a killer. Like, what's your motive? It's kind of stupid. They play Cottonmouth Kings there in it. That's fucking annoying. Why are you playing Cottonmouth Kings? <laughs> kind of an annoying soundtrack. Uh, the cast is great, though. They bring in Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. Sliders. Sarah thing. Jessica Sliders. <laughs> we've come full circle. I said Sarah Jessica Good Parker. Night. <laughs> Good night. Wrong with Sarah. Uh, uh, there's not Sarah, Sarah Geller. She's in that. Uh, yeah. I mean, Sarah Michelle Geller's in it. Uh, they bring back Jamie Kennedy, who I think I've talked about this before. He's one of those characters when you're young, he's likable. When you're old, he's fucking annoying. Yeah. Because he tries so hard to play up that I'm a nerdy video store guy character where I'm like, we're not like that motherfucker. Especially when I became the dude managing the video store. <laughs> like, we don't act like this douchebag. Like, Derek doesn't act like this We're douchebag. just like, stop stealing our VHS tapes. Yeah. Please. I don't spend my whole day talking in fucking movie quotes. Yeah, you're you know? too busy trying to catch thieves and <clears throat> yeah. fire your Yeah, we don't do that. We don't talk to all of our friends like just referencing every fucking movie we could think of every time we have a discussion. We do that now. We do that now <laughs> on a podcast. We have a podcast for that, but yeah. When he gets killed, though, that was a pretty big thing, though. Like They killed off, like, a main character from the first one that seemed like the franchise was built around, like, Jamie Kennedy, Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they killed little Randy. Yeah, I mean, and other people like uh, Timothy Oliphant was in it. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he yeah. did a crazy good job, and that's before yeah. anybody knew who he was. Exactly. Yeah, that's my kind of horror nerd. Crazy, knows his well, shit. And is not completely fucking... Not, he's going to get yeah. laid tomorrow if you want. And I think we talked about this before. So in Scream 1, the killers are pretty obvious. Like, Billy is obvious. Stu is kind of the curveball, I guess. Part 2, like, when I first watched it, I didn't feel like either of those characters were on screen that much. I, I guess I wasn't paying attention because I was so focused on the main characters from the first one and their lives and what they're doing. I wasn't paying attention to anyone around them. Because I think my assumption was it has to be someone from the first one, right? Yeah. They're going to come in like, ah, it was That's me too. Thing. I was literally I was trying to figure too. this out yeah. as the movie's going on. I don't do so, that much, but I did that. So one. when Mickey showed up and was part of it, I was like, fuck, is this guy even in the movie? But then when I go, <laughs> then, just on the wrong set. Yeah. Like, what is this? But then when you go back and watch it, they hint at all that shit all the way through the movie. And they're both, like, both characters are on screen every other scene. Yeah. And it's weird, in my brain, they weren't on screen, ever. There's but really good go red back, herrings everywhere yeah, else. Yeah, all the time. Especially the news reporter chick, whose name is escaping me right now. But she's constantly in Nev Campbell's face. She's total stalker. Her and Courtney Cox go at it, like, all the fucking time. And when, like, Courtney Cox does something shitty to her, I think she smacks her, actually. But she makes, like, a facial expression, like, I'm going to kill that bitch. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, now that I look back on it, she wanted to kill that bitch. Yeah, it's really good. It's one of those yeah. movies, that, uh, the Scream franchise, you can keep going back and, and re-watching them and re -watching them and finding all the little Easter eggs. For me, one and two, yes. Three, no. Uh, three, one thing I hate is that they killed the mystery because you had the guy fake his death like halfway through a movie. Yeah. Which totally ruins it. Like, the fun of those type of movies, at least when I was younger and when they were coming out, was the set with friends and kind of like guests and shit. Before motherfuckers would get on their phone before seeing a movie and look up who's going to be the killer or whatever. Yeah, right. You actually sat around and bullshit and guess a little bit and say shit. And then when you kill the guy half off to where I can't even guess the motherfucker or like, it's like oh yeah, I faked my death and I laid in that coffin or whatever the fuck in the, on the movie set. Oh yeah, here's Jay and Silent Bob for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> I love that dumb stuff. Yeah. I like the, how they use the set from the first film Isn't series. Isn't Tori to Spelling do. in that at some point? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's very she much Jay and Silent Bob oh, coming back. that's why yeah. I hate it so much. I hate her eyes. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Tori Spelling's okay. eyes fucking it's scare okay. me. I'm, if I saw those, like, at night in my window, I would just kill myself. <laughs> I would just shoot them and then kill myself. I don't think I could kill them. I don't think I could shoot her eyes out. Oh, my God. I oh, hate her so sorry, much. Sorry, Tori Spelling. Sorry, I watch a lot of 90210, and I yeah. hate Tori Spelling. We're going to have to wrap this up, actually. I do this, love 90210. This, this episode went fast. It went fast because we're talking about sequels. And a lot of the shit that we're, we're, we will have, like, full episodes about. Like, Scream yeah. will definitely come back to and just talk about the whole franchise. And I'll talk more shit about it, probably. Yeah, Dave, you want to... Uh, we didn't even talk about Evil Dead 2. We didn't. I said it, uh, but y'all just fucking just well, glanced over. Just let's keep going. <laughs> Started talking about the anger in days Jerry O'Connell or something. I don't know. No, because okay. well, no, you okay. know we're going to do an entire Evil Dead episode. I mean, we've already talked yeah, about Yeah, we Bruce will. Campbell, so. And we talk about Evil Dead so much. We did Bruce Campbell. We've talked about Danny Hicks on two separate episodes yeah. now. Yeah. We talked uh, about uh, the, the, yeah, everything. Talk with Sam Raimi. Yeah, but I, mean, let's, I can. I love to dissect these movies. So, well, let's just ask the hard hitting question: What's your favorite sequel? Evil Dead Two. Wow, you Dave, Dave did that face. really fast. Holy shit! I, I'm gonna be weird, and if you uh, had to just pick one. If I had, to, fuck, man, Dawn of the Dead. 
Dawn, Dawn of the Dead, Dead for yeah, sure. If I have to. Not Night of the Demons too. <laughs> no, but I like that. Because we didn't touch on those at all. That, I think that's interesting because that those are great sequels. Yeah, they are. They 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 hold up. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Mine is a. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it because we didn't fucking talk about it all on this show. Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Oh, yeah. It's the best fucking horror sequel fucking ever. I don't I care if anybody says, I hate Prom Night. I think Prom Night's dog shit. It bores the shit out of me. I think a little goofy kid getting caught in a fucking curtain or whatever and going to be coming to kill her is the dumbest shit in the world. And then there's Prom Night 2. <laughs> Which is like so fucking over the top, batshit crazy. I don't think it was even originally supposed to be a Prom Night movie. But it's like the ultimate like '80s slasher. You like the third one? No. <laughs> You're not gonna like the remakes. Either. It's like the it's like there's a there's a third there's a fourth Slumber Party Massacre that really has nothing to do with any of it. Like the well, last Slumber Party. Four prom nights, right? Jesus. Because I think the, the remake. I think the last one has something to do with like religion and shit. I'm pretty sure part four happens around the church or something like that. But part two is just so like bad shit. Fucking over the top crazy. And it, it's pretty much like Nightmare on Elm Street, but it's prom night. Like instead of Freddy, it's fucking Mary Lou. But it's the same style of deaths and shit, except you don't have to be asleep. But everybody's like framed, like what's happening? Are these kids like killing themselves or what the fuck ever? Yeah, that's a movie uh, that, that just did not get any fucking kind of press. And then prom night too? Yeah, yeah. And then it, now it's come back. Yeah, I, well, maybe you just think it's coming back because of just me and Joe. Probably. It's just like five yeah, years. Maybe that is because like the people around you when they notice yeah. something or they remember something or they bring it up, you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah, that that was just one I Nobody saw talks about this movie. at a very young age in my VHS <laughs> rental days and I probably rented that movie like eight times as a kid. And now watching it I'm like, Fuck yeah, that's the best thing. And I like other shit too. There's a lot of shit we left off, like Pumpkinhead too and all that but Blood Wings, Blood Wings. Yeah. Blood Wings. We'll do a, a Pumpkinhead franchise episode one no, day. No, we won't. That's yes. Gonna, well, that's the thing about the, this episode is like there's so many movies that we are going to single out and do a franchise on, like a franchise episode that we just are like, God damn, you know, I didn't talk about Psycho 2. I, I enjoy that. Amityville Horror yeah. 2 is, I think, a better film than the first one. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Texas Chainsaw Massacre it's, 2 and 3, I think. Which yeah. One, which one does he uh, kill Renee Zellweger in? That's the, 4. That one. That's got uh, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Ro- Ro- Robo leg McConaughey. Oh my gosh. He traded in those legs for a Lincoln, though, so that's pretty good. Yeah, three had uh, three had uh, Viggo Mortensen, right? And yeah, Ken yeah. Foray. Yeah, you know, yeah. Ken Viggo Foray. Mortensen from or Lord of the Rings. Or History of Violence. Or the guy that beat the shit out of G.I. Jane. Oh, oh my he? god. Like in real life? No. Eastern like Promises. He's a good Cronenberg man. Oh, Eastern Promises. I didn't like that one, but yeah, we won't. We're get sidetracked too much. Yeah, we, we can do a Cronenberg like episode. Billion, I can't wait. We can do a Cronenberg. There's a billion sequels we could have talked about. I think the whole point of this conversation, though, and hopefully when people listen to it, they realize that sequels don't always suck. I mean, usually part two is fine. Most of the time, off the rail shit happens three, four. Beastmaster two. Six. Six. <laughs> Producers cuts of six. <laughs> Talking to you, Mikey Mike. Michael Myers. I hate Halloween six. Can we do a whole episode about how much I hate Halloween 6? I think you already did. Next week. I think we did, actually. <laughs> Fuck, we did do that already. I just want to do it every week for the rest of my life. I'm not a fan. I'll, I'll take Halloween 6 over Halloween 5. But seriously, yeah, sequels are super underrated. Like, even talking about Night of the Demons 2, Pumpkinhead 2, Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. These are all just as good as the first one, and they get ignored by fans. I'm a fan of and, uh, uh, Halloween 3, and Halloween 4. And it's become way too cool to shit on every yeah. sequel or reboot that ever comes out. So I think... Friday 13th Part 5 is one of my favorites. It's just ridiculously, it's got some of the best kills, some of the Part best boobs. Part 5 is the one I'll probably talk about the most when we go over the franchise because I love how trashy that movie is. Yeah, it is. And also Violet. Yeah. Violet's my favorite. Sweet. That little, those sweet dance moves. <laughs> the robot. If we get 10,000 subscribers, I will do that dance. Oh, please, please. <laughs> so that's another thing. Please like and subscribe to the, 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 the YouTube page. Follow us on all of your favorite platforms. Spotify. Google Podcasts. Uh, uh, Apple Podcast, <laughs> Apple iTunes, Apple iTunes, Breaker, Breaker, yeah, that's all these places. Thank you so much. Download for us on LimeWire. Yeah. Oh my God, get the, get the good ones. Get that virus. <laughs> all right. See you guys. We're out of here. Peace. Bye. <laughs>